Hello and welcome to this channel. My name is Dick van Oeveren and in this second MPLS video I will demonstrate a MPLS Layer 3 VPN setup on Conway devices. One of the limitations in setting up static LSRs is that you cannot have overlapping IP addresses, which is actually something that you would like to have. The way to solve this is to use VPN instances. A VPN instance isolates the Layer 3 processes similar to what a VLAN does for Layer 2. With the introduction to VPN instances uh, to create layer 3 separation, the configuration of the LSPs also changes. For MPLS layer 3 VPNs to work, we will need a signaling protocol that will carry the VPN instance information so that the destination can distinguish the VPN instances. This information is called the root distinguisher. The protocol that we use for this is multi-protocol BGP. And of course MPBGP sits on top of the BGP protocol, so that's something that we also have to configure. In the uh, introduction video I also talked about labeling, and I showed you how to create a static LSP by assigning specific labels. This is a cumbersome configuration, so let's change this as well. Uh, I will uh, also show you how to configure the automatic distribution of MPLS labels by introducing the label distribution protocol or LDP. So uh, does it dazzle you already? No worries, after this video you will understand how to set it up and it looks more difficult than it really is. Let's take this setup as shown in the diagram. We have two CEs on each side and you can see that I will be using overlapping IP address ranges. So not the same IP addresses, but the same subnets. So I can prove later on in the demonstration that the IPs are isolated from each other. OSPF is already set up and working. This is already demonstrated in the introduction video. Uh, MPLS is enabled and I have removed the static LSP. So it's pretty much a clean slate. Also notice that I have added a slightly different description to the P and PE devices. Typically a PE device is identified as a label edge router because it terminates the LSP. And the P device is identified as label switch router because it only performs MPLS transit switching. So let me just show you this slide. Uh, an LSR can also act as a LER. If you would terminate an LSP on an LSR, that LSR also becomes an LER. So that router will have a like dual functionality as a transit and an edge router. The first step in the configuration is enabling the label distribution protocol on the WAN interfaces of the LERs and LSRs. This is pretty simple. So we have to enable MPLS LDP globally and then uh, enable it on the WAN interfaces. So let me take P1 first, LDP, and then go to the interfaces. Um, so that would be 3.0 LDP enable and interface 4. And let me show you P1, enable globally. Uh, enable and then what you can see is that once I enable uh, once two interfaces are enabled you can see that the LDP sessions are up and established okay and let's take P2 That's it. And then finally PE2. Um, sorry, so this is the wrong interface. Should be interface 1 and 2. There you go. So uh, so what you can see here is that I did a display MPLS LDP peer, and you can see that the peers are are up and running. And they're active. The LDP is operational. So what we're going to do now is we are going to configure BGP. We have to do a couple of things here. 
Um, for MPBGP to work, we have to establish a peer relationship between the LERs and LSRs, and that's what we're going to do first. Uh, in this setup, uh, I'm using a single autonomous system. You can also have MPBGP operating in multiple ASs, obviously. Um, uh, so we have to create the peers on all the routers, uh, set the connect interfaces to the loopback interface, and then enable BGP peering by creating an address family for IPv4. Um, it is common practice that if you are working in larger networks where peers have common parameters like the connect interface and AS numbers, uh, to create a peer group and then assign the peers to that group. This makes it a lot easier to make changes if necessary, and then you would only have to do this once for all peer members of that group. So let's start with um, PE1, create the uh, autonomous system, assign a router ID, and then create a peer group. Let's call it IBGP. Now what I can do is I can specify whether that is a uh, internal or external BGP group, uh, group. So internal means that you're using the same autonomous system, external means that you're using eBGP. If I don't specify internal or external, um, the group will use the autonomous system that has been configured on this device, um, which is in the uh, you know in this setup is the case. So I will do that, and then what I can do for the peer group, I, IBGP, I can configure uh, parameters for that group and then say loopback zero. All right. And then what I can do is I can create the peers. So for example, 1.1.1.2 and I can assign them to the group that I created. And I can do that for the other peers as well. Four. And then the next step is uh, creating an address family for IPv4. And then what I can do is I can specify the group and enable peering for that uh, whole group. Okay, so that's the configuration on PE1. What I'll do is uh, I will configure the other devices as well because the configuration is very similar. And then once that's done, I will show you uh, I'll, I'll show you the status and uh, whether everything is up and running. Okay, uh, everything configured here. You can see that uh, there are some messages here saying that the uh, state is changed from open confirm to established. So let me just show you what I've configured quickly. Uh, so that's on the P device and that's the, the, so this is the other P device and this would be P2. You see, so the configuration is very similar. Uh, sorry, go back one. Okay. Uh, now let's uh, check out the peer state. So if I do a display BGP peer IPv4, you can see that there is peering between uh, P1 and PE1, P2 and PE2. And this applies to all the other routers as well. BGP peer IPv4. Actually, you can see that I have an additional peering to one as well. So I, every router here is peering with all the other routers. Now that BGP is running, uh, we have to enable the MPBGP functionality for the layer 3 VPNs. And we only have to do this on the LERs. What we do is we create another address family, which will be using which we, which is used for layer 3 VPNs, which is VPN v4. And I need to enter the other PE's uh, address, IP address, connect uh, interface address, to enable uh, the MPB, MPBGP functionality for uh, layer 3 VPNs. What you can see is that when I do this, uh, the IPv4 uh, peering bounces. 
So do the same here, VPN v4. Okay. Display VGP peer IPv4. So everything is established here. And let's check whether the peering is also established for um, VPN v4. I think it's still running because I don't see. Okay, yeah. So it's just, this is established. So that means that the MPBGP functionality is enabled for um, for BGP and layer three VPNs. Next, we will be creating the VPN instances. Assign the VPN instance to the interfaces that connect to the CEs and assign the IP addresses. So they will be the overlapping IP addresses. So we'll create two VPN instances on each CE and we use the root distinguisher as explained earlier uh, to identify the VPN instance and the VPN target tells the VPN instance where to send and receive routing updates. Right, so IP VPN instance customer A uh, with the root distinguisher, let's just say 10.1 and VPN target 10.1. Okay, and let's create another one. Customer B. We have to use a different root distinguisher, obviously, and VBN target 21. Okay, so let's assign the VPN instances to the interfaces. 1.0 IP binding VPN instance customer A. And you'll get a message that the IP configuration has been removed or some configurations have been removed which typically are the IP related um, parameters. So I'll just assign an IP address dot sixteen dot one dot one and I'll go to the other interface two dot zero and I also bind a VPN instance but in this case that would be customer B and what I can do now, I can assign exactly the same IP address to this interface as interface gig 11, 10, sorry. Okay, so I'll do the same on this one, IP VPN customer A, uh, root distinguisher 101, VPN target 101, uh, IP VPN customer B. 21 VPN target 21 and then assign them to the appropriate interfaces interface gig 3 and 0 find VPN customer A and IP address 172.16.2.1 so that will be a different subnet uh, interface gig 4.0 and do an IP bind VPN customer B and I'm going to assign an IP address that is in exactly the same range again. Uh, just give it a different IP address, but it's in the same subnet. And finally, we have to assign the VPN instances in MPBGP so that the LSPs can be established. In the BGP context, we create the IPVPN instance entry and then create a IPv4 address family. For simplicity, we only import the direct routes for now, so that the directly attached network information is exchanged. We have to do this on both uh, label edge routers for both VPN instances. So let's start with the top one. Let's go to the BGP context, and we create IP VPN instance customer A, and create an address family, IPv4, and import the direct Roots. Okay, we do the same for customer B. Uh, address family IPv4, import root direct. Okay, PGP 65000, and we do the same on the bottom LER IPVPN customer A, address family IPv4, import root direct. Uh, IPVPN customer B, address family, 
Watch Mode Direct. Let's check whether the VPNs have been established and whether communication is possible. First, we're going to check out the uh, the routing table on uh, for for customer A on the top LER. So display IP routing table VPN instance customer A. So what we're looking for here is this entry. So you can see that this. Um, routing table contains a BGP entry which is the subnet that has been learned from the other side. I can also do that for customer B. You can see the same subnet has been learned but then for a different uh, VPN instance. So what we can also do is we can show you the routing information per route distinguisher. So what I can do for that is uh, the command display BGP uh, BGP routing table um, that would be VPN v4 yeah and then root distinguisher 10 1 which will be customer A. So what you see here is you can see an entry here at the bottom saying that this route has been learned by IVGP. Now and then the final check. Let's uh, see whether there is isolation. So from uh, from the top uh, label edge router from PE1, we will issue a ping with the source address 172.16.1.1 in VPN instance customer A, uh, trying to reach uh, 172.16.2.1 on the bottom LER. So that should work, right? So if I do a ping VPN instance customer A. My source will be 172.16.1.1 and my destination is 172.16.2.1. So that should work. Okay. Now, if I try to ping the IP address in the customer B uh, VPN instance, this should not work. And you can see that there's separation, so they don't work. And I can also uh, do it. Uh, in the opposite direction. So if I choose this one, VPN customer B, uh, which also has IP address 172.16.1.1 assigned and uh, ping to the 2.2 address, that should work. There you go. However, I should not be able to ping to the 2.1 because that 2.1 IP address is in a different VPN instance. And you can see that that's the case. So this concludes the MPLS Layer 3 VPN demonstration video. So there's much more to come very soon. If you have any comments or feedback, please let us know. And thanks for watching.